Okay, everyone. Uh, please, uh, before we start, please, um, um, please mute your uh, respective uh, microphones first. And if you have uh, questions, feel free to unmute your microphone and just ask away whatever clarifications that you want or whatever questions that you have. Um, yeah, so let's start. Um, good evening here in the Philippines or good morning um, to those who are morning in their time zones. Um, welcome to our webinar. So our webinar is about Learn Chatbot with Marketing Master IO or MMIO. Um, on this webinar, we are going to discuss the features that would be uh, beneficial for you and for your clients, how you can use the uh, chatbot feature um, in Messenger and Instagram. Um, because those two are are pretty similar. They have they have similar um, features. Um, you would learn how to use that. How you can um, um, best um, utilize and best uh, get value out of this feature. So we have a lot to discuss. First is we are going to discuss the 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 rule or what we call the Facebook. Uh, messenger policy because that is the overarching rule that we must follow and whenever we create a flow or whenever we create a chatbot flow we should keep in mind the 24-hour window or 24-hour rule or the messenger policy and how we can best um, um, create our campaigns to follow uh, messenger policy and safely send our messages to our subscribers so uh, that would be our first um, first uh, part of the lesson. And after that, we would move to actually importing our page, creating our chatbot flow, and then the basics of the chatbot flow interface and how we can create uh, a well-organized flow, best practices in creating a flow, um, and then other features as well um, for messenger marketing um, in, in, in MMIO. Okay, so... Let's first go to the um, to the uh, to messenger policy. Let's first discuss this. Okay, all right. So, are you guys now seeing the messenger policy um, um, window? Are you seeing the messenger policy window? All right, so who among you here are already familiar with the messenger policy? Do you, does anyone, uh, do anyone here, um, um, are you familiar or, or you have not encountered the messenger policy yet? Okay, so for those who are familiar, then it, it would be a refresher or more, more information. And for those who are not familiar with it yet, then it's time to know um, what, how important following the messenger policies. So basically the messenger policy, it is used by Facebook to combat spamming, okay? So since the start of messenger policy, now since the start of messenger marketing, um, people are really free to send any messages to their subscribers anytime. Um, and sometime, maybe a year or a year or two, um, the, the platform experienced a lot of abuse from messenger users or the messenger marketers who use messenger to send messages to their subscribers. So Facebook had to find a way to save the platform from becoming a spam um, platform and to keep users using messenger as, 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 a, as a good tool to communicate with their loved ones, with their family and friends, as well as, well as businesses. So they invented or they published the messenger policy. What the messenger policy in, 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 in an overview does is it limits businesses to send messages to the subscribers only within the 24 hour window. So when does the 24 hour window start? So when your subscriber sends a message to your page, um, the, the, the clock or the messenger window would start at that time. So since the start of the message or since the time that the subscriber sent a message, um, the 24-hour window clock will start ticking. So you have until 24 hours since the start of that subscriber, uh, since the subscriber sent a message, you have 24 hours to send messages to that subscriber, whether it is a promotional message, whether it, whether it is an invitational message or whatever. Just you, you can send any messages. 
So um, it is still it is bound with the messenger limitation, wherein you can only send 200 messages per day to that specific person, right? So keep in mind that the limit or the hard limit. So it doesn't mean that you should abuse that limit, wherein if you if Facebook has given you the power to send 200 messages to the subscriber. So you would use that as well. You are going to send 24-hour messages in, in a 24, 24 hour span. So if you do that, well, you, you, you might get away with that because it's technically okay. But um, messenger, messenger bot or the, the robots or the AI, that's a better term, the AI that is, um, that is running messenger uh, might flag your page as a spam page. So um, your your the quality of your page might might uh, might be lower. So uh, mind you that uh, the messenger AI. So it's not humans who are grading our uh, messenger performance platform or in, in Instagram. How are how are how are we using that platform? So humans are not are not the first to grade us or are not the first to rate how well we perform as a uh, messenger marketer. So it is the artificial intelligence or the AI of Facebook. So when we send a message, um, make just just keep it in a, a very a very um, natural use case, just like you are talking in to a friend in Messenger. So that's a a big overview. So let's go to the contents. Okay. So the standard messaging. So. Um, let's let me read this first. Businesses have up to 24 hours to respond to a user. Okay, uh, messages sent within the 24-hour window may contain promotional content. So, what what is uh, a promotional content? A promotional content is uh, anything that promotes your page. Yeah, whether it is a free coupon, even if it is free it is still considered as promotional. So a lot of people are asking, what if I send a free, an off, a free offer to my, to my subscribers? So I'm not promoting, I'm just giving a free offer. But since you are still um, in a way gaining um, from that message, it's still considered a promotion by the Facebook algorithm or the, the AI, Facebook AI. So sending coupons, um, letting them know about promote about about events, letting them know about your sales or 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 sales sales season. You're offering twenty percent discount or so. So that would be considered a promotional content. Anything that promotes your page, whether it is a anything that promotes your business, whether you are sending a free offer or a paid offer or you are requesting for an audience, anything that uh, promote your business is considered a promotional content. All right. Um, so it, it's pretty simple. You have up, up to 24 hours uh, to send a, a promotional message. So after the 24 hour window, can we still contact the subscriber? Example, a subscriber have a message or page 6 a.m. All right, 6 a.m. So basically you have, you are... You are you are able to send a promotional content until 6 a.m. the next day to that person. So what if we are going to send? Can I send a message three days after that person sent a message to us? Well, the answer is yes. You can still send a message message to that person, but it is controlled. You are not free to send any type of messages. There is what we call a use case. So Facebook only supports four use cases for this. So um, that's why Facebook invented message tags. Message tags are used so that you can send a, a message to a subscriber um, outside of the 24-hour window. But if you use message tag, you should not um, send any promotional message. All right. So there is a use case for this. We are going to discuss what are the use cases for messenger tags later on. So as you can see here, let's, let me read this first. Uh, message, message tags enable businesses to send important and personally relevant one-is-to-one -one updates to users outside the 24-hour um, standard messaging window. 
we provide four message tags to support certain use cases. The message tag includes human agent tag, allows businesses to uh, manually respond to user within seven days. So the human agent tag, we, we, were, we are going to elaborate this, but um, this is a, a different use case. So basically four use cases um, and the, among the four use cases, message, uh, the human agent tag is unique, is different from all of other use cases. So let me check. Um, we, we will get back to that later on. And then another way that you can send a 24 hour, I mean, another way that you can send a message, message to your subscriber outside of the 24 hour window since the start of the message or since the subscriber has messaged you, um, you can use the one-time notification or the OTN. So let's read OTN or the one-time notification. So the one-time notification enable businesses to request a user to send one follow-up message, just one. So that's why it's considered, a, that's why it's called one-time notifications because you can only send one message, message to that user. But um, the only thing here is it is upon request, meaning the user has to approve this, this request first before you can actually send this message. So you can even send promotional messages using the one-time notification feature. Um, the, the, only, the, only, uh, the only thing that you need to do is wait until the user has actually approved your request um, to send a promotional message to them. So the one-time notification has a one-year span. So example, the user has approved your um, one-time notification request on January of 2021. So you can, at the span of one year, you can, you can use that token or you can send a message to that subscriber in the span of one year. Um, it, it, but after a year, it will expire. If you didn't use that approval after a year, it will expire. You won't be able to use it anymore. So you would need to, to request approval again. All right, for the news messaging. So this is uh, um, news for, for news organizations, uh, basically to send updates. Um, but um, we as marketers, we, 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 we rarely do. Uh, we, we, we have a very, uh, we, we, we don't use this. News organizations use this. And Facebook um, have a very strict um, approval for this. You must be a duly organ, duly uh, uh, recognized news outlet that is recognized has have papers that you are a media company and you are not some 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 just some some dude or just some internet marketer who just want to use the news messaging. So um, we we won't be able to use this unless you have a news agency or you have a me duly registered media agency. Um, which you can you you can show papers that you are a duly registered news agency in your country. But if you don't have that, then you won't be able to use this. And then last is the sponsored messages. The sponsored messages is um, it's basically Facebook ads. You can send promotional content or promotional me promotional messages to your subscribers, even if uh, it is outside the twenty four hour. If even if it is um, anytime, actually anytime you want but you have to pay for it. So that's why it is sponsored messages. Okay, so when does the standard messaging window start? So Facebook have, um, have given us the, the, the cases um, in which the 24 hour window resets, okay? So first is if your user or if your Facebook page subscriber sends a message to your page. So if they send manually send a message, say, hello, how may I help you? Um, or I, I need I need help. Or whenever whenever a, a, a subscriber sends a message to your page, that that would basically uh, mark the start of the twenty four hour uh, twenty four hour window. Another is if a user clicks a call to action button like get started within a messenger conversations. So there are a lot of uh, I think there are two two or three three types of uh, ways you can trigger the call to action. The first is the get started um, call to action. The next is to click to messenger. And then 
Next is, um, by the way, the click to messenger ad. This is, um, this is Facebook ads. You know, if you if you if you do message ads in Facebook and they click your ad, then it basically would start in the twenty four hour uh, window. Um, user starts conversations with a with a page um, via plugin. So plugins are sent to Messenger plugin and checkbox plugin. So these are, these are basically basically growth tools that I'm I will show you how to use this uh, later on on our training series. Another is when user clicks on an m.me link. So I'm going to show you as well how you can create an m.me link. So an m.me link is basically a URL. And that URL corresponds to your Facebook flow. So if you send that message link or the URL to your subscriber, and if that subscriber clicks on that URL, then the 24-hour messaging window will start. You would have 24 hours to send another message to that subscriber. So another is when a user reacts to a message. So what are the, the reacts? So that is um, when they when they uh, react, a smiley react or okay react to a message. Let me, okay, uh, please uh, let's let's um, silent our um, uh, uh, mute or mute our phone. Okay, thank you. All right, so those are the ways that you can refresh the 24 hour messaging window. Notice that in this, um, in this use cases, um, the comment auto the comment reply on the on a on the inbox or on your on your um, the comment automation private reply does not trigger the uh, the twenty four hour window. So by the way, guys, if you are not familiar with the comment um, private reply feature, so it is it is a feature where um, when when users uh, comments on a post, and then um, you can actually automate your your post to send a private message to all people who have commented on your post. But um, if people just merely comments on that specific post on a public post, that does not refresh the twenty four hour window. It would refresh if a user clicks a call to action button or any buttons inside of messenger i told you earlier there are three types of buttons inside of messenger the first is the get started button and then the chat bot flow buttons and then the quick reply buttons so if the user uh clicks any of those three types of buttons um it would refresh so if the if the user did not engage on your um, comment automation private reply, the 24 hour window will not refresh. Okay, so um, basically the one-time notification, I will show it to you later on. I have already discussed the one-time notification. So again, to review the one-time notification, you are going to request to a, uh, uh, you are going to send a request to your user or to your subscriber. Um, and then if that subscriber approves your notification request, then you would you would have uh, one year to use that um, approval or the token um, to send a message, whether it is a promotional message or whether it is whatever, whatever message that you want uh, within the span of one year. All right. All right, so message tags, news messaging, sponsored messages. So um, I have already discussed that earlier. Um, so what if we don't follow the 24-hour policy? What would happen is Facebook would flag your page for abusing um, the messenger platform. You would receive a message in your support inbox, inbox on your page inbox. Um, so if you want to know if you have a warning, um, uh, if, if you have violated any of the Facebook um, Messenger policy, just go to your page and then go to your page support inbox. You'd be able to see a, a warning in there. But yeah, if you don't, uh, but if you follow um, the rules that we have uh, discussed earlier, then you are pretty much safe. So to, uh, to, to further elaborate on this, 
Um, by the way, guys, I, I discussed this because this is really important. Um, I I I, re I highly suggest that you don't start um, playing around with Messenger if you don't yet understand the 24 hour or the Messenger policy, the 24 hour window. So uh, we have a blog here which you can check um, when you can send or not send a message to your subscriber. So it is to, to summarize, it's basically a, it's, it's really easy. Do you want to send a promotional content or do you want to promote your business with whether it is a free offer or not? If yes, then you have only up to 24 hours to do that. Um, if, if the 24 hour span um, have, have already, uh, or if, if it's beyond the 24 hour window, then you would use the, um, you basically have three ways to, to, mess, to message, the, the message tags, but the message tag, although it is free, um, but it is really limited to four use cases. So what are the that four use cases? By the way, I think I have not discussed the four use cases of the message tags yet. So let me uh, check this. So the use cases um, that is allowed by Facebook um, for message tags. So these are the message tags, by the way. So yeah, I want to share with you the screen first. Okay, the, the confirm event update. So confirm event update, um, it's only used for events. If you have an event that is, uh, if you want to send promotional, I mean, if you want to send reminder, um, confirmation of reservation, notification of user transport, user's transportation. So basically, uh, Facebook have already uh, um, specified here the allowed use cases and not allowed use cases. So promotional content is not allowed. So another is post purchase update. So the post purchase update message tag, you are basically uh, sending a, a purchase receipt or whenever, example, you have an e-commerce store and um, the user has just bought something from your store. You can actually send an order receipt or an order notification to your subscriber um, um, uh, using the post purchase update message tag. All right, so you can send this even if it is outside the 24 hour window. Um, what are the allowed use cases? So confirmation of transactions, notifications of shipment status or um, product in transit, ship delivered, delayed. So it is safe to send those type of messages as long as you use the post purchase update tag. So changes in related orders, example, uh, the credit card has been blocked. So basically, you still cannot send a promotional message or promotional content to your subscriber using the post-purchase update. Another is the account update. So example, um, the use cases that are allowed are um, changed application status, notification, suspicious activity. Um, you, you still can't use this for promotional content. All right, um, the human agent. So this is basically for chat, all right, live chat. So MMIO uses the human agent um, message tag to allow you to send messages to your subscriber within the span of seven days. So it is not 24 hour. Um, it is, you are not, uh, you are not, um, what we call this, confined to the 24-hour window, you actually have seven days to send uh, messages to your subscriber um, if you use the human agent. But you can only use this using live chat. You, can, you, you will not be able to use this on your chatbot flow because automated messages are not allowed. So as you can see here, this is the disallowed portion, okay? Disallowed portion of the usage. So on the disallowed portion of the human agent tag, you can see here that automated messages are not allowed, okay? So you have to manually type or manually use a, a, a keyboard and type away your message to your subscriber. Um, but we have uh, MMIO, uh, we have a feature wherein you can send a flow to your, to your subscriber on our live chat feature. All right, so you can you can send promotional messages to your subscriber using human agent, but it it is not inside a flow. 
it will only be inside the uh, live chat feature. So I hope that is clear, um, the difference between the message tags. So we have four message tags. The three message tags, you, went be a, you, you are not allowed to send promotional content. But the fourth message tag, which is, which is the human agent tag, you can promote your business. You can promote your, um, your, your, your page, but you cannot use chatbot for this, or you cannot use this on an automation, meaning you cannot, you cannot create a sequence of messages that uses human, tag, human agent. You can send any type of messages. It, it should only be in, in, in live chat. So those are the allowed and not allowed use cases. So yeah, those are the, the type of tags that you can use. So let us proceed now uh, into MMIO, how, how to utilize the chatbot feature. Let me share with you the screen first. All right, so are we, are we seeing now the, the MMIO dashboard? Are we seeing now the MMIO dashboard? Hello. Thank you. So we have a question. Just to clarify, what is the difference from using FB Messenger directly? All right. So using M Messenger directly for um, what, what do you mean uh, when using message tags or when using chatbot? Because you cannot use chatbot inside of um, FB Messenger directly. So the biggest difference from using Messenger, FB Messenger directly and using MMIO live chat feature is using MMIO live, live chat feature, you can you can send a flow. You can you can send a you can add a tag to that subscriber so that you can you can better filter out the subscriber later on. So basically you will have more feature or more control over how you can organize your subscribers if you use uh, MMIO live chat feature. So for M of FB Messenger directly, you can you can use Messenger directly, but you won't be able to use automations. You will have to manually type. You would be able to send a flow, which you can uh, the any any flow that you have created inside of MMIO. You won't be able to use that. Um, on FB Messenger directly, right? So, well, the advantage of uh, having having to use the FB if FB Messenger directly is um, you can send messages even even to those subscribers who have not interacted with you for a long time. Just don't abuse this feature because I think you have only up to fifty. You can only message 50 subscribers using using the Facebook Messenger directly. And after that, your page will be flagged as spamming. So there's still limits, all right? So should we proceed with creating your chatbot, with creating chatbot flow? I, I, I believe um, I have discussed thoroughly uh, how how we can better um, get around with the messenger or, or or get around with the messenger policy or um, I have discussed what what are the, the 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 dangers if you violate the messenger policy and what it is about all right so let's let's start to use the chatbot feature um, the first step uh, is to import your Facebook profile and your your facebook pages that's the first step so to do that go to facebook and instagram all right facebook and instagram and then click the import social media feature uh, i mean button and then click the add up add a page or if this is your first time to import your facebook account you would be able to see here um, import or add new Facebook account. So click that. So basically you can add more than one Facebook account here and each Facebook account have an access to the pages that ma that, uh, that account manages, all right? So if you want to add more um, Facebook accounts, click add new Facebook account and then continue, continue with Facebook. Make sure that you have already logged in that Facebook account on Facebook. So if you go to Facebook, um, on, a, on a separate tab on your browser, log in first, all right? Once you have logged into Facebook on a separate 
tab, you can go back to MMIO and then um, add your Facebook account. And then the profile that you have logged in, that would be the profile that is important, that would be important on your, on your MMIO. So after that, the next step is to enable your page. Um, to enable your page, um, you can click enable here, just like this. If I want to enable this page, I'll just click the bot enabled or enable the bot and then just wait uh, wait for a few seconds. And then once that page is enabled, you would be able to use that page for your automations. All right. So that's how easy it is. So as you can see here, I have already uh, enabled the pages that I want to use on my automation. So if you want to add more pages, all you have to do is click add a page continue with Facebook, and then select the page that you want to add. So to select a page that you want to add, I want to show you how you can do that so that um, if someone were to ask you, if you have a client that asks for this, you would be able to answer them. So add your Facebook page, and then you would be able to see here the edit settings button. So click the edit settings button, and then you would be able to see here there are options which pages you can you can add. So let, let let's just wait for the uh, uh, for this uh, browser to load. Okay, so as you can see, you can select or unselect a page that you want to import. So you can basically do this. You can unselect the pages that you don't want to import, and you can. Uh, just include the pages. You can, if you want to include all your pages, just click select all and all the pages that you have selected in here will be included um, on, the, on the process of importing your page. So let me go to next. And then after this, um, you are going to give permission to MIO to use this, um, to use the features that are provided by Facebook. So, to, for in order for MMIO to work best, you need to click yes to all of this. So once you have added yes, click done and all your pages will be added. So note that the connection to your page has not been made yet, all right? So the connection is not yet made. That, that's the difference. Um, let me just um, clarify a little more um, because I have, I have a few subscribers or a few few users that are asking um, this this question. So let me clarify this first. Okay, so let me share with you the 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 screen. So are you seeing now the white screen? Um, this is basically paint. I want to draw something in here. All right. So once you add a page, a connection is not yet uh, created to MMIO, all right? So the, the, um, the permissions that you have um, enabled earlier when you added the page, those are what we call possible permission or potential, uh, potential um, permissions that your page can use. But those permissions are not yet used they are still potential, all right? So, um, so let me say, let me, uh, let me just draw something here. So example, this is your page. And then uh, this is your Facebook account. So once you import your page on MMIO, if you, if you have not enabled your page yet, there is no connection yet, all right? So there's no connection, but there is room for connection. That's the difference. There is a possibility for connection, but the connection has not been made. Um, the permissions are already there. But, well, let's just say that your page can use this, but that, that is, doesn't mean that the page are already using that because the page still have to, re to, to actually um, um, request those permissions to Facebook before it can be connected. So connection is not done by default it is requested manually. So in MMIO, how do we request those permissions or how do we enable those permissions? Because those permissions, although they are given or although they are available, they're available when you check those switches uh, earlier, 
during when we when when we um, imported our page, although those are checked, but those are not used, so no connection has not been uh, uh, is is yet uh, created. So in order for those connections or those permissions to be used, we need to click enable page. So once you click this, once you click this button, the enable the page, the connection will be established. Oops, sorry. Um, those that page is already used. Let me let me use another page. So if you click enable um, button, let me share the screen first. Oops, I'm gonna share the screen here. Okay, so once you click enable um, enable switch, that's the only time that the connection is made. All right. So once the connection has been made, um, your page will be able to utilize the permissions. Um, that is granted to MMIO. So you can now go to Chatbot Flow Builder. So this is the first uh, step in order to create a chatbot. Go to Chatbot Flow Builder. And then um, you would be able to see at the top level the list of pages that you can use. Um, so example, I want to use this page. So if I use that page, um, that would become the current active page and I can create um, a chatbot on that page. For example, test page. Or test chatbot. Chatbot automation. Okay, let me click OK. So after clicking OK, you will be redirected to the dashboard or the chatbot automation um, interface. So this is what we call the doc menu. You can create a element um, using this, but um, I generally don't um, use uh, that. Um, what I suggest that you use instead is this. You can right click or you can just use, or what you can do is um, you can click the node socket or the this one. This is what you call the socket, the node socket. You can click that and then drag it on the screen. And once it is dragged on the screen, click on the screen and then you would be able to see the least of possible connection that this um, this element can create. So example, I want to use a text message here. So this is how you can configure your element, all right, your, your, your text element. So text element, it, it is the most basic element that you can use. It basically sends a text to your subscriber, a text message. So you can click this to configure, and then let's say hello, and then let's just say the first name of the subscriber. Hello, first name. And then you can add emojis here. So let's just click emoji. And then let's just say uh, I want to add a smiley face in there. OK. How are you? OK. So after that, you, uh, you can click OK or confirm the changes. All right. So you can basically use the first name, last name, or you can also use the Custom um, custom variables. So we'd be able to discuss the custom var variables later on. How this, how how you can create this? What are the use cases of the custom variables? So basically, you can store data to your custom variable, and then and then later on, you can you can um, show that data to your subscriber. Um, you can send that data to your subscriber on your chatbot flow by uh, using a, um, um, a custom variable, all right? So I will show you how you can do that later on. So let's just keep it simple for now. So if I want to confirm changes, I'm gonna click confirm changes. So there is a little known fact about uh, MMIO. You can actually use AI or, or um, artificial intelligence to gener auto-generate a content, all right? So have you, uh, if, if you are already a user of Marketing Master IO, I, I, if, and if you haven't known this, you can auto-generate a content to your um, chatbot. So how do we do that? Click the auto-generate button here. Once you click the auto-generate button, um, uh, you can actually, uh, what, what we need to do is specify um, the product or service that we want to uh, to to create or to 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 create a message on. So let's just say that I want to create this John's string coffee or strong coffee. 
And then our target persona, let's say, yeah, let's just use young men. And then what is uh, what is our 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 buyer's intention to this for this? So after that, let's let, you can say buy or learn more, sign up, inquire. But let's just say uh, that um, we are talking to someone who want to buy a, a product on, from us. So let's this, so that's why um, we are going to put a, a product here, the buyer persona, and then the intention of the buyer, and then click generate now. And after doing that. Um, a content will be auto-generated for this. So example, um, Jan's strong coffee is healthy, uh, is a healthy alternative to a regular coffee. Unlike regular coffee, our coffee is derived from the finest roasted beans. Our beans are hand selected for the low um, cafe or caffeine index. So if you don't like this, you can click auto-generate again. You can click generate now again. Um, until you uh, arrive to a pretty good message to your subscriber, all right? So this is a little known um, um, feature that you can also utilize inside of MMIO. So I am not yet aware of any chatbot um, that have a auto-generate content directly within the chatbot. So this is a unique feature. Um, that is only available in MMIO. So um, I, 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 I encourage you to use this feature. It, um, it would really help you if you don't, uh, if you are having a hard time composing a message, um, what message to send to your subscriber, then you can use the auto-generate feature. So let's just say that um, I'm going to use that message. And then um, what are the elements um, um, on, on, on the chatbot? that you uh that i that are uh, that can help you so well um a lot of people are are still not aware that you can change this actually um let's say the start message okay so you can actually change the the label of that message so the the advantage of ch changing the label of that message is later on when you are if you want to when you are going to use this same flow to another to another campaign example broadcast campaign sequence campaign um, notification campaign or whatever um, you would be able to easily select which message you want to send by um, identifying um, that message using this label all right you can change it you can change this, all right? Change this anytime, okay? So after that, um, example, this is our first message. Um, actually, this is this is a, a, a valid message. We can save this already. So let me save this. So after saving, we'll be able to see or view um, what this message look like. So how are we going to test? So we have a test button in here. Just click send test. And then we will be redirected to Messenger. And we'll be able to see uh, the message that we have just composed. So let's just wait for the Messenger to load. All right. Ah, all right. So this Messenger, we haven't created a get started message yet. So when you are doing a test, um, and you and this is your first time in using this page for your automation, then you need to use a get started or you need to apply a get started feature or uh, a get started button on your page. So to, to apply a get started button on your page, we need to use a trigger. So right click and then find the trigger here. And then, so this is the trigger. You need to connect the trigger here on your um, first message. Actually, you can connect a trigger to any, any messages, but since this is our only message and this is, this is the message, message that we want to appear, um, and this is the message that we want to send to the subscribers who have um, visited or, or messaged our, our page um, for the first time, then that's why we connected this trigger on our first message. So let's configure our trigger. So, when configuring a trigger, uh, we need to select the, the get started type here. And after doing that, click OK. And then, yeah. So that's how easy it is to configure a get started button. 
So click save. So by the way, guys, you can only select or you can only enable one get started button or one get started message um, for your page. So after that, click send again. So once we have enabled a get started button here, that is the get started trigger. Um, let, let's test our page again. You would be able to see that we have a get started button in here. So um, are you seeing the get started button? Is it clear? This one? For those who are uh, uh, who did not see the get started button, so this is the get started button. This uh, is only visible to, uh, this will only show up um, for the first time uh, if, if your subscriber has messaged your page for the first time. So it, will, it won't show up again um, to those subscribers who have already um, interacted with your page before. So clear the drawing, go back to mouse. So if, if we click the get started button, it will trigger um, our message or any message that is connected here. So as you can see here, Jan Strong Coffee made from a blend of blah, blah, blah. So this is the message that was um, triggered because this is where the get started or the get started trigger is connected to. All right, now let's uh, explore about buttons. You can basically create two but two type of buttons. I mean, three type of buttons in, in Messenger. The first is the get started button. I have already showed you how you can create the get started button by using the get started trigger. So create a trigger, connect the trigger to your um, message. And then, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's the first type of button. The second type of button is the button, the button that is um, that can be attached to your message. So let's create a button here. So just click add button. Let's just say buy now. I want people to purchase. And after that, um, we can select the type of buttons in here. So let's just say um, go to website URL, HTTPS marketing. So I want to redirect users to my website. So I can use this. Okay, oh, let's just say um, learn more. Instead of buy now, learn more, okay? And after that, let's just hit save. And then let's see what it looks like, what it looks like, what button looks like. So uh, click send, send again, send a message again. And then you would see that the get started button will not trigger again because on, it will only trigger um, for the... Uh, when when you message your page or for subscribers who message your page for the first time. So as you can see here, we have already added a learn more button. So if you click this, we will be redirected to our Facebook page or, or to, to the page, or I mean, to the website that we have configured on the button. So yeah, so that's it. We are redirected to a website. So what if I want to send another message after, the, after they click a button? So... You can add another button in here. So let's say, um, I uh, what are your uh, what are your uh, let's say services services, and then this is the button text, and then let's choose the next step. And after that, we are going to add another message here. So to add the message, click on uh, on this button socket click on the screen and then you would be able to see here. Next is we are going to add a um, another message in here. And after that, let's add um, a simple image. And then, yeah, this is the, let's just add this too. So services, so let's just say, um, hello there. These are our services. And then let's just say um, service one. And then you can list whatever message that you want to add here. Service one, service two, service three, service four. Okay. And then for the image, how do we configure our image? You can send an image um, by first uploading the image that you want to use. So let's say I want to add a very simple image in here. 
okay, let me choose um, a very simple um, image. Let's just use this. Okay, after that, click OK. The image will be uploaded. And once the image is, up, is uploaded, we are going to save our flow, and then we can test the flow again. Okay, let me save. click Save, and then send or uh, test our flow. But before that, I want to show you another method um, to trigger our flow. So that method is the keywords trigger. So we can actually add another trigger here. Let me right click, add a trigger, and then I want to connect it in here. So I want this, uh, I want um, our keyword to trigger this, the very first message whenever a keyword match is found. So that's why I'm gonna choose this, choose, choose a trigger type, choose keyword, and then you can actually add more than one keyword in here as long as you separate them with a comma. So example, keyword one, separate with a comma. Keyword two, separate it with a comma. Keyword three, separate it with a comma, hello. So you have basically four keywords here. Keyword one, keyword two, keyword three, and hello. So a keyword could be a single word or a keyword could be a sentence. A keyword would be uh, a group of words, as long as you separate it with a co comma, it will be treated, treated as a keyword. Sorry about that. So let's just use this, um, this keyword trigger. And then by the way, we have types of keyword uh, triggers here. We have a wide match. Uh, we, have a, we have wide match and strict. So wide is, uh, it will basically ma ma match your keyword even if the uh, without checking if the keyword is a capital word, capital letter, uh, without checking if the keyword is just a part of a word, it will match globally. So if you want to become, uh, if you want your keyword to be stricter, um, you can use the match type. Or if you want, if you want uh, um, a very strict match wherein the system would, would, would check a very exact keyword to match um, before before it would trigger, then you can use the strict type. But for now, let's just use um, the the most widely used the match or the wide type. So let's save this. So we have already learned how to use the text, configure the button um, for the message. Okay, let's just say. Um, by the way, I want to set this message. This is my um, reply message okay let me save this again so um, i really suggest uh, uh, this best practice whenever you create a message um, create a uh, or or modify the label so that you want you won't be uh, you can have you can easily identify um, your messages later on so by the way i want to explain to you the chain of messages the, the message label only appears to the parent of the chain message. So this right here is a message chain. What do you mean by message chain? It is a message that is sent um, in, in bulk, all right? So this is the, mess, the, the first chain of the message, and then this, this is the second chain. So it is considered as a one message. Um, let me show you uh, what a chain, chain message looks like. Let me test that again and then, all right. So this is our new, new flow. So as you can see, we have another keyword here. We have added services. So let's click services. So once you click the services, services button, it should trigger our message chain or um, it should trigger two messages because Facebook considers a single element as one message. So since you have two messages that is connected together here after, after, after the button, then this one is a message chain. So let's click services. It will send that message chain. So this is the first message. And then the second message will be the image. So this is the, the image. So you basically sent two images in one go. So that's why, or that's the reason why the label here is only um, available on your, the, the very first message of your message chain. 
So when does, does the message chain start? It starts after the system requires the user to engage. So what are the, the assets or what are the features that, that, requires, that requires users to engage? So those are buttons, okay? So when you have a button, it would require a user to engage by clicking the button. So once the button is clicked, it will trigger a new message chain. So if you just keep adding messages here, it will just be added to the chain because you have not created a, 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 a subscriber interaction um, feature. So if, we, if you want to end this message chain, all you have to do is create a button. So if I want to end that chain, I will add a quick reply button. So what is the difference between a normal button and a quick reply button? I will show you. So next step, let's just say that um, uh, option one. So this is a quick reply. This is another type of button. So option two, and then let's just say this is option three. And then option one, let me add a text here. Hello. I am option one. Okay, and then we can we can just duplicate this uh, message so that um, we don't have to manually create another one. So let me clone this one and clone this one. So that's how you clone your message. And then I will connect this in here and then connect it in there. And then on the option two, let me change this to option two. And in here, let me change this to option three. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now what is the difference between button and um, the quick reply. But before that, for us, for, for this to be easier, um, we are going to add another quick reply here. Go back, okay? So this quick reply will trigger the very first of the, our flow. Let's connect it to our first flow. Let's just say, go back here and then connect this quick reply again to our first flow. All right, and then this one, next step, go back. All right, and then connect this quick reply button to our very first message here. Okay, great. So this is our flow. We can now save this. After saving, we are going to test our flow. But this time, we are going to test using keyword trigger. So let's go back here, and then let's trigger our keyword. Uh, all right. It's best, I think, if we, yeah, if we, if we um, maximize our window. So do you think um, this is better? Are you, are, you, are you seeing our chat better now or, or our messenger uh, channel better? Hello? Do I, do I still have on, an audience here? Hello, guys? Yes. yes, looks good. Okay, okay pretty good. Let's, uh, uh, let's go back. Okay, I'm going to share this. So let's type keyword one because that is the keyword that we have configured earlier. So it should trigger our very first flow. All right, so it triggered our very first flow. And then if I click services button, it should trigger our chain of message. The first would be a text. The second would be an image. And then there you go. This is what we call um, quick replies, all right? So option one, option two, and option three. So um, the difference, between button and quick replies is the quick reply is located below and it is aligned horizontally. But the buttons is attached to the message just like this one and it is aligned vertically. So by the way, guys, the but for the buttons, you, you are limited. The buttons, you can only create up to three, three of them. That is the limitation set by Facebook, all right? Um, you won't be able to add more than three buttons here. So yeah, that's the, that's the, that's the uh, limit by Facebook. 
But for the quick reply, you can add up to 11. This one, you can add up to 11 quick replies. All right? So for button, three buttons only. For quick reply, you can add up to 11 quick replies. So that is the difference. So now let's click option three. So it should send the message that's connected. Hello, I'm option three. And then as you can see, we have another quick reply here. Go back. So we have a question. Okay. Uh, I, I thought it was a question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Good, for, good for you um, that you were trying it out. So, um, can I ask something real quick? Sure, sure. So I have just added one of the images. I'm, I'm unsure. Can I actually add words along with images? So of course. It's like option one, two, and three, but I don't see anywhere for me to add like words right below the images. You can actually add them using another element that we are going to discuss later. So you can add a generic element or a carousel element. So let's discuss that later on. All right. So we will we will uh, we will we will go to that later. So and then let's click go back. So this is our first first message. And if we, and if you click go back, what do you think would trigger? It would trigger the very first message because. On our flow, if you go back to our flow, we have connected this button, the go back button, we have connected it to our very first message on the flow, all right? So that's how you can, actually this is a best practice. Whenever you create a, 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 a Facebook chatbot flow, always have a button or a quick reply. Do not leave it hanging, all right? That is the best, um, the best way to keep your users engaged with your chatbot. If your users are engaging with, with your chatbot, what do you think would happen? The messenger policy 24-hour window would keep on resetting and resetting, and you would have more time to send promotional message to that subscriber. So that's the importance. That's why... Um, we really need to make our flow very engaging. Always add buttons, okay? So just like this one, we, 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 each of our message must have uh, a button or a quick reply um, in order for users to engage. And if, if, you, and if, if, you have, if you have reached the end of your flow, what you can do is add a, uh, a button that says go back to the menu or the top the top menu so yeah let's trigger again another keyword so what are the keywords that we have created earlier keyword one keyword two keyword three and hello so let's trigger keyword two it should trigger again our top of the flow okay another keyword three it would trigger our top of the flow again and it was if we say hello it would trigger our top of the flow again, right? So now, what if I want to trigger a, a, a flow? Um, uh, I want to trigger a different flow, all right? So this is our flow. This is our first flow. But I want to trigger this. What do you think uh, we should do in order to trigger this flow? Any, any show of hands? Any volunteers or any idea? What do you think should we do in order to trigger another message aside from our top of the flow? I want to trigger this using keyword, this message. Any show of hands? Any volunteer? Hello, come on. Add a trigger. Yeah, correct. You can actually add multiple triggers. Um, maybe some, someone is thinking that you can only add a trigger on your first of the flow. Actually, you can add a trigger on any of the messages. Add a trigger here, and then select keyword here, and then let's say that um, this is another, okay? So our keyword is another, and then it should trigger this, all right? Let me save. After saving, let's trigger the keyword that we have just created. So let's test another, and then it should trigger our message sequence or uh, I mean chain of messages, all right? Right, so as you can see, it triggered the chain of messages here. 
you have an image and then you have our quick replies option one option two option three if we click option two it will trigger the message hello i am option two and then if we click go back quick reply it will go back to our very top of the flow all right so again you can add um triggers anywhere on your flow here you can add it in here you can add it in here right so that is uh, how you can use triggers now for the question earlier can we add um, an element wherein there's an image and there is a text well that is what we call um that is what we call the generic element so let me add a generic element first here so right click and then click generic so this is your generic element so let me configure this generic element first, and then I'm going to show you another um, another unique feature that is uh, available in MMIO. So let's configure this. Uh, this is the default message. Uh, let me remove this first, and then let's upload another message or another image. OK. Let's upload another image. Let's just say that I want to upload this. OK, so that is another product. And then what you can do is you can configure the title. You can configure the description. And then you can, you can even add a redirect URL whenever the users click on the image. So let's just say that this is our one daily multivitamin. And then let's just say that the price is this is um, $50 per bottle and then buy one take one all right and then the image with direct url so what we can do is if you have a website or if we have an e-commerce store um, you can actually add your e-commerce store product link here so that when users click on the image they will be redirected to that specific product okay so i'm going to click okay and that's how you configure your um your image so in MMIO, even if this is not connected, you can still trigger this. You can still trigger this element. So how do we trigger an unconnected element? Well, you add a trigger. Click trigger. And then let's just say vitamin. OK? So we have added a trigger here, even if, even if it is unconnected to the flow. So the only way that the subscribers will reach this message or this one is if they trigger this keyword the vitamin keyword so let's just save this and then let's trigger this using our keyword vitamin and then you would see uh, what a generic message look like all right so this is what a generic message look like so we have a description here so this description it can be longer all right it is up to 200 characters, but the, the title, it is limited only, all right? So I think it is only up to 50 or 45 characters. So the image and then the, the, the title and then the description. So what if I want to create multiple of this, multiple images, and then I want the users to be able to swipe these messages if they want to see more? of this, then we should use what we call the generic or the carousel, carousel element. So right click, create carousel here, I'm sorry, carousel, all right? So this is the carousel element. Um, let's just say that I want to connect this here. Okay, let's create a quick reply and then show, show carousel. Okay, so this is our quick reply. And then once they click that show carousel, uh, let's redirect them to this. So for carousel to be effective, um, to, be, to be better than generic, we need to add more, all right? So let's just say I want to configure this. Let me add another image here. Okay, this is um, our image. Okay, um, let me find what, uh, the images that uh, that is better here. I have prepared images in here, but yeah. So let me use um, this. Okay. 
that is our first image of the carousel. And then, you know, for it to be faster, since you already uh, know how to configure the generic or carousel element, I'll just use the generic or the, the, the basic. So once the image is uploaded, um, we can basically add another carousel. Uh, by the way, guys, you can only add up to 10. The limitation is 10. Oops, that is not viewable. Um, let me, okay, let me add up to, let me just use the generic here. Okay, that's how easy it is to add more elements on your, okay. Okay, for, for to make it to make our lesson faster, um, I'm not going to configure each 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 of the card card of the carousel. So you can change each of these cards. You can add button for these cards. Example, I want to add button here. Um, go back. I have a button here, and then next step, and then this button. I want to attach this button to the very first start of the flow. Okay, so you can add buttons in each of your cards. And as usual, the limit for the button is you can add only up to three buttons, okay, for this one. You can also add a quick reply at the, at the very bottom, uh, bottom of your um, carousel, and you only have 11. You can, you can have 11 choices for, for your quick reply. Uh, Hello, Colin. Hello, Colin. Yep. Can you click on button I, there's some you just click on button just add button yeah add button here okay um, right there start right there you're go back, go back. You, no no uh erase out of go back all right um yeah and then just click it again mm -hmm. now just put the cursor in there just put your cursor in there in in no not there the right, here. yeah now how do you get those automatic um you know, the uh, this one? Yeah. Yes. Ah, uh, this is on my browser. Okay. So this is saved on my browser. This is not on MMIO. So I am using Edge browser. So what Edge browser does? Microsoft Edge, the replacement for the Microsoft Internet Explorer. So right. it it saves the input on your buttons so that you can use it again. Yeah, that's what I was trying to figure out. Like, is there a special like inside of? No. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it is a browser specific. So you can also enable this on Google Chrome, but go, but you have to go to settings and then go to uh, fields and then click save fields. If you do that, um, Google Chrome will save all the input that you have on your fields and then you can use it, reuse those fields later on. So this is not an MMIO, this is for your browser. All right, okay. that, I hope that's clear. Yes. Okay, so... Um, yeah, let me save this flow. And then let's trigger this flow again by click by triggering it using vitamin. And it should trigger our generic generic uh, message. And then as you can see, we have a quick reply here. And if I click show carousel, um, the, the carousel uh, that, that we have created earlier will be shown here. So the user would be able to um, swipe left and right here so on their mobile phone it is it, it would look much better because the 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 the, the uh, facebook has put a lot of em emphasis on mobile users when designing the 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 chatbot flow how it is shown to users so yeah so you can change the carousel item here you can change the description you can change the images and as you can see you can add you can even add buttons to each of the, those individual cards that is a part of your carousel. So if we click this button, go back, it, we, would, we should go back to the very first part of our flow, which is this one, all right? So that, that is um, the, the, the feature where you can add an image and a, and a text together, and you can have multiple of those. Um, for e-commerce, this, this is very useful for e-commerce because you can basically add products um, on, on basically add products in here and then add the link for your of your product on each of those carousel cards. And if you click 
any of those cards, the subscriber will, will be redirected to your product page. So, yeah. So let's move on. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to discuss another feature. Um, wait, there's a question here. Uh, the question is, is there a limitation of size and image ratio for the image upload? Well, yes. Um, um, you always use uh, images lesser than um, 1050 one, pixel by 1050 pixel uh, what, in width. And we can basically use two types of images in here. Um, the first is a square, square image, square. So check your chat, a square image, and um, rectangle image. Uh, basically, it is a landscape. Landscape image that is 16 is to 9 in ratio. All right? So square image and a 16 is to 9 ratio. So what if I used not exactly 16 is to 9? Then what would then um, what would happen is your image will not be, be shown as a whole. You, you would be able to see your image that are um, um, that are that are cropped. Your your image will be cropped basically if you did not follow the specifications by Facebook. So my suggestion is always use square image for um, for for this. So your images um, like this one. Let me show you uh, the er earlier um, the earlier chatbot flow. So this is a square image, and as you can see, the square image um, took precedence. It it basically became the template. And the other, it's still a rectangle image, uh, a, a landscape image, 16 is to 9. But as you can see, there is a lot of space here because Facebook um, adjusted or took uh, prioritized the square image here. So the square images will really look better. Um, but if you use a landscape image, make sure that all your cards are using landscape image to avoid um, large spaces like this one. All right, hope that's clear. So it's basically just a, 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 th a static thing. Um, it, it, your, your flow will still stand, all right? Your flow will still stand, but the image will be cropped. There are, it will not, sometimes it will not look good because of a lot of spaces. So yeah, I hope that's clear. Okay, let's continue. So um, what are the elements that we have discussed so far? We have discussed the, the text element, the triggers, generic type, and then carousels. We have, uh, we have images. Um, by the way, guys, another feature, another cool feature uh, um, which you can use in MMIO is this one. So how many of you are aware of this? Have you been using this or have you used this already? Anybody who are uh, who have already created the flow, have you used this? What are this for? So basically, uh, this is used for um, if you want to. Uh, well, for me, I mainly use this for Facebook ads. This one, and another is if I want to trigger the flow. Um, using m.me link or postback ID. So basically, this is for Facebook ads. So yeah, this is what we call the payload ID, your bot payload ID. So if you, if you click that one, and then you can basically, and then you paste it here, uh, click, uh, let, me, let me just create another, yeah, yeah. Let me, let me add another just a notepad, and then I'm gonna share with you what it looks like. Screen one, sharing. All right, so if we, if we copy this and then paste it in here, you would see this. So this is your post back ID. So the post back ID is used to trigger Facebook ads. If you use message ads, another is your m.me link. 
So if you click this, this is basically your m.me link for this specific message. So if we copy this, or click that m.me link, and then go to your browser and paste your m.me link on your browser and then visit that link, um, what would happen is you will be redirected to Messenger and then it would trigger the flow of that m.me link. So example, I want my subscriber to... Uh, I, I want to show this. I want to show this to my subscriber without them having to enter the keyword. What I could do is I could send an email blast. I can email my link to my subscribers and then I will attach, I will copy that m.me link and then I will attach it to my email or I can share it to my subscribers. So once your subscriber clicks on that link, clicks on that URL, they will be redirected to that specific flow. You can also add this URL on your website. Example, you have a WordPress website. You can actually create a button on your WordPress website. And then on the button, uh, on, the, on the button URL, just, just get your m.me link here and then paste this button, your, paste this m.me link URL on your WordPress button URL. So if your subscribers click on that button, they will be redirected to Messenger and then um, they would receive this flow, just like this one. They would receive this. So this is useful um, if you want to send offers and then if you want to renew the 24-hour cycle or the 24-hour messaging rule. So um, earlier, uh, I have this already discussed that clicking on m.me links refreshes the 24-hour policy. So example, if you want to resubscribe or, or if you want to send a message safely or promotional message, message safely to your subscribers or email subscribers, what, what you can do is you can send an email blast and then on that email, attach a button and then on that button, add your m.me link. And then once your subscriber receives your email and clicks on that button, they will be redirected to your messenger. And then you can basically send a promotional message to the subscriber in the span of 24 hours. So that's the use cases of m.me link. You can also use this on Facebook ads, m.me link. And the last one is this, the JSON code. So how how... How many among you here are from or have already created a Facebook ad? Familiar with Facebook ads? Messenger Facebook ads. Hello? Who among you here have already created Facebook ads in Messenger? Um, but have you? Yes, uh, Clarence, Shang, so you have, uh, you, you have created uh, a Facebook ad. Um, are you familiar with JSON code, how this can be used on your Facebook ad? So JSON code is used if you want to create a Facebook ad and you want to attach the JSON code on the advanced messages feature or advanced messages section of your Facebook ad. You can click copy JSON code and I want to show you what this JSON, JSON code looks like. Okay. So the JSON code basically looks like this. Oops. Um, I think I better use another, another notepad in order to show you better um, what it looks like. All right, um, wait up. Okay, let me uh, minimize this window first. And then I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna just make sure that the screen has been sh is shared. So, all right, so this is your JSON code, all right? So this JSON code is used in Facebook ads. If you want to attach your JSON code um, on Facebook ads, uh, just just use this. Just copy that. Um, we have prepared a guide if you are using, if you want to use Facebook ads and if you want to use your messenger flow when doing Facebook ads, we have a guide uh, that is in here. Let me show you our guide. How this can be uh, done easily. Okay, connect your Facebook ads on MMIO. Okay, oops, yeah, 
So, um, if this is your Facebook ad, you need to create a, a advanced template or use a message template on your Facebook ad. And then you can copy the bot payload on the flow builder and then uh, and then attach the bot payload on your on your facebook ads portion in here so this is where you paste the facebook uh, the the post pack id that you have copied on your flow this is the pay bot payload by the way the bot payload id this is where you are going to attach the bot payload id for your facebook ads and then for JSON ads, you can copy the JSON code in here and then attach the JSON code on your Facebook ad in here. So this is what it looks like, all right? If you, if you copy the JSON code here and then paste it on your Facebook ads, it would look like this. All right, so frequently asked questions, you can use keywords. And then, yeah, that's how uh, uh, you can use. And then m.me link, you can use that on your Facebook ads by using um, um, website visits type of Facebook ad, and then paste your m.me link on the web URL portion of your Facebook ads, all right? So yeah, that is the use case of this one. It will, it will be easier for you to, to create ads, to, 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 manage, to manage your messages using this. Okay, um, another feature that we want to discuss is this one. All right, so if, if you want to add images um, or GIF images, moving images, then um, let, me, let me just attach it in here. Let me delete this and then let's attach it here. Okay, GIF images and then add a quick reply. Next step, show GIF image. And then attach it in here. All right. So, and then uh, for GIF images, what you can do is click configure this, click that, and then search for an image. Example, laugh, uh, laugh, laugh uh, GIF. So we have a lot of choices in here. Let me choose. Um, let me choose this. Okay, so that's 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 so easy. That's how you uh, create a GIF image. Okay, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's showing now. So it, it was just loading late uh, uh, earlier. So after that, you can save your flow, and then to access your GIF image, let's go back to Messenger, and then trigger hello, say hello. After saying hello, um, it should trigger our very first part of the flow. And then if we click show GIF image, it will show us the, uh, the GIF image that we have attached uh, earlier. So yeah, this is the GIF image. All right, so another, um, another element. Um, what if I want to attach a video? So it's really easy to attach a video. There are two types. Uh, there, are, there are two methods to attach a video. Um, I'm going to show you here. Show video one. And then next step, show video two. OK. So the first method to attach a video is by using the video the video element, okay? So this is our video element, but this type of method is limited, very, very limited. You won't be able to upload larger videos um, because the limit is only up to 50 megabytes of video, 50 megabytes worth of video. So let's upload our video. Um, let's, let's choose um, our video in here. Okay, so example, I want to attach this video or upload this video. So, so let's click OK. So we have a question here. How many videos can I upload within one chatbot? Oh, well, as many as you need. <clears throat> as many as you need. You can add as many as you need. So our, our, our video one is already uploaded. And then 
what is the second method? The second method is by using the Facebook Facebookpedia. Okay. Actually, this is my recommended method um, using Facebook media. Um, if you use this method, you can upload larger videos or you can use larger videos. Uh, you, you will not be limited to only um, 50 megabytes. So another question here is, is it possible for me to cause a lag or a crash if I upload like 100 videos? Well, it's possible, but there is what we call um, ju just just let me let me refresh. Um, the question is: Is it possible for me to cause lag or crash if I upload like a hundred videos? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's possible. So what you can do is um, flow segregation. There is what we call flow segregation. Your flow can be so large. Example: You have you have a thousand thousand um, elements in here, a very complicated uh, flow, a very large flow. Well, that is not a very good um, uh, um, us uh, usage of flow. Yeah, it will lag your flow and your de de development experience will not be good. So what you can do is actually create multiple, multiple flows and simply connect um, one flow to another. In that way, um, you, you won't cause lag. So even if your entire flow have a hundred or more videos, but you also have, let's say you have, you have 30 flows, 30 flows that are connected to each other. So it will not cause lag. So you have 30 smaller flows that are connected and then all in all, it, it forms your large, it, 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 is, it forms your large flow. So yeah, that is what we call flow segregation. We will be able to discuss that later on on our on our topic on our on our lesson. Okay. So hope that is clear. Yeah. So let's continue. Facebook media. So how are we going to you? What what are we going to do if I want to you or if I want to upload large videos, videos that are um, that are very long. Example: two hour long video inside of my messenger. So since the upload upload video method is not viable, oops. Hello, yeah. sorry about that. I was disconnected. Yeah, I was going to say right. You you stop where it says if you have thirty. That that's when it started going. You started turning into like the the bot voice. So <laughs> sorry about that. So yeah, so. Um, example, um, you have a uh, 100, 100, uh, a very large flow with 100 or more videos. So what you can do is you can segregate it or you, you can create, um, um, you can divide it into smaller flows and then you can just interconnect it with one another. So it, uh, example, uh, you have 30 flows or 20 flows that are connected to each other and it will form your larger flow. So in that way, um, your development or experience will be uh, will be will be smooth because you are just editing a uh, small flow at a time, and it is it is it is easier to organize um, that in the, in that manner uh, if you just segregate your flow. So we will be able to discuss that later on in our lesson. So yeah, let's go back to the Facebook media type. So again, the first method is to upload a video. And then um, this method has its own limitation because you can only upload 50 megabytes of video. So that's very, that's very small. Um, I think that's only a minute, a minute or so, or maybe, maybe one minute or one, two minutes, two minutes of video, depending on your uh, video quality. But if you want a high quality video, uh, example, two hour long, high quality video, then you need to use Facebook media, <clears throat> the Facebook media element. So this video will be shown inside of Messenger. Uh, it will be high quality and it will be uh, um, as long as you want it. Um, to do this, um, upload your video on your Facebook page first. So yeah. You need to upload your video on, or you need to publish your video on your Facebook page first. And then what you can do is 
you are going to copy the link of your video, of your Facebook page video. So again, you need to copy the link of your Facebook page video and then configure your Facebook media and then paste the uh, Facebook media URL in here. So for example, let me, let me get a, 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 a video URL from, my, from a page from my page. Now it's crucial that uh, the page that you are going to attach, attach the video is the same page of your chatbot. Example, I am using this page, Kalski Modern Online uh, Courses for Pinoy's. Um, if I use this page, I need to use or upload my video or large video on the same page. So example, I have a page here and this is the video so I'm going to copy the link, copy the link address of this video. Okay. This is the link of my video. Okay. Once you have copied the URL of your video, you can go back to your um, chatbot flow and then configure, configure your Facebook media URL, paste the link of your Facebook page video, and then click OK, and then boom. That's how easy it is to, to send or to, to, to add um, a very long and high quality video on your chatbot flow by using Facebook media. So let's save this flow and then let's test our uh, videos. Okay, let's go back to Messenger and then let's say hello to trigger the very first part of our flow. All right, let's say show video one. If you click that, um, the next part is it will show the video that we have attached earlier. Okay, so my internet is really, um, so just, let's just wait. So uh, this is because of my internet connection, not really well. Okay, so as you can see here, it should, it should send the video. Let's just wait. It should send the video. Yeah, as you can see, the video is already sent in here. So um, let me trigger um, the, the second method. So using the second method, it's a lot easier and it's a lot faster for, for Facebook to send the video. Let's say hello. It will trigger the first part of our message. And then click show video too and uh, Facebook will send the, the video faster. Just, so as you can see here, um, the, the video is just loading. Um, unfortunately, my internet connection here is not really good. And yeah, so this um, video is 11 minutes long and then it is a high quality video. And yeah, this is a much better way to upload or to use videos on your chatbot by using the uh, Facebook media. So for me, I, per <clears throat> I, <clears throat> I personally recommend that you use the Facebook media feature to, um, to send videos to your flows or to your subscribers. Um, advantage is it will be as long as, long as you want <clears throat> and then it will send faster and then um, it is high quality. It will not be reduced, uh, unlike, unlike uploaded videos. <coughs> All right. So I guess that would uh, mark the end of our session one lesson. We really have a lot to go. We really have a lot of feature to discuss. So um, I hope I will see you guys tomorrow um, on our another, another series. We will continue where we left off. So let me just um, <clears throat> let me just um, recap what we have discussed so far. We have already discussed the 24-hour rule. What is the importance of knowing the messenger policy? And then we have um, <clears throat> learned how to add pages, Facebook accounts, enable pages, and then creating your first chatbot flow. So we have learned how to create a text message how to add buttons in our message, how to connect, um, how to connect the, the
the messages of the flow to one another, creating uh, a chain of messages like this one, configuring your chatbot label, this one. So again, it is best practice to always change your, your uh, chatbot label so that it is easier to manage later on. It's easier to identify your, your, your message. Um, we have discussed um, the, this, the purpose of these three tools in here, the payload ID, um, M.MP link, and the JSON code. This is basically for Facebook ads. We have learned how to use and configure triggers by adding a get started trigger and adding a keyword trigger. So you can separate triggers, multiple triggers, uh, keyword triggers by using comma, comma separated. Um, we have learned how to configure an image, learn how to uh, add a quick reply. Um, we have learned how to add a generic element, um, a carousel, carousel element. And um, the best practice is to always engage or have a way for user to engage with your bot by always adding a quick reply or a button to your flow. Uh, whenever it is uh, it, it, in every in every end of sequences of your flow, uh, do not leave your flow hanging. Always add buttons. Uh, next, we have discussed the difference between two types of videos. The first is uploading a video directly; it has its limitations, and the second one is using the Facebook Media Video. Um, at the best the best way so far to upload a video on your chatbot. Um, by uh, um, hello, sorry about that. The mic is up. Um, yeah, thank you for thank you for uh, reminding me. So <clears throat> we have learned how to um, to create this the Facebook media um, by by uploading our our video on your on your Facebook page and then copying the uh, link of your uh, uh, Facebook page video and then pasting that link here and then yeah it would be a high quality video and then one thing i think i forgot was to add a typing delay so it's really easy to add a typing delay to each of your messages so just click add typing delay and then you can type a delay here example two seconds typing delay yeah so you can add typing delay in here so that's basically it we have learned how to test your flow by clicking send test and then how to save the flow by clicking save flow. All right. Mm, tomorrow we are going to discuss more elements, more uh, more features, more hidden features that you can use um, to create a better and uh, well-rounded chatbot um, in in in, um, in in MMIO. So another thing is, yeah. <clears throat> let me remind you that we have an auto-generate feature. Just click auto-generate. Add your um, add add the the fields that you want in here, and then your chatbot will auto generate the content for you using um, GPT three AI. So yeah. So do you have any further questions before we end our video? Under the triggers, um, why match the the options of that um, for the keyword? Could you um... elaborate on that? Yes. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So the best way to elaborate on that is by actually, uh, let's say I want to this, uh, okay, vitamin. <clears throat> so this is our first keyword and this is a wide type. So um, let's just um, discuss the properties of the wide type. Okay, let me get it here. So let's say vitamin it would trigger the keyword as usual, right? I have already shown you that this would trigger the, the, this one. So for the white type, um, even if uh, the, the, your keyword is a part of a larger word, example, multi, multivitamin. So this is a, key, a word, a multivitamin. But since vitamin is part of your word, multivitamin, it will still trigger because this is a wide type keyword. Yeah. So example, 
vit vitamins and then whatever word that you put in there it will still trigger because it is part of the word is white type yeah so it, it, if it is part of a sentence example this is my sentence hello world this is my sentence that includes includes multi vi that means it will trigger because it has v i t a m i n on it it will trigger so uh but the thing is we have a hello here hello <laughs> so the first word will be the, the 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 example if you have multiple triggers on your sentence then the first trigger that would be the one that would get triggered so what if we use another uh, another another keyword type <clears throat> So let's use match type. So we have a question here. What if my keyword is multivitamin and the user type multivitamin? Then it will not trigger. If you use that, <clears throat> since the multivitamin is not part of vitamin because the multivitamin is larger. So, so the, the, the wide type, if it is part or a substring of or a part of a larger, larger group of keyword, then it will trigger. If the, your keyword is larger than the actual what the 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 the, the subscriber actually type, then it will not trigger. So let's say I will use the match type. Uh, match type. Okay. So what is the match type? The match type is it it won't trigger your 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 keyword will not trigger uh, if it is part of if it is a part of the word example. Earlier, uh, let me save that first. Let me save. Let me save the key, the, the changes that we made. Um, let me save the changes first. Okay. So if we trigger vitamin, it will trigger. It will trigger. <clears throat> vitamin. Okay. But if we use vitamins, vitamins. Nope. Nope. No trigger. Why? because it is a match type it had to be vitamin so it will not trigger on multivitamin anymore multivitamin no it will not trigger but it will trigger if it is on a sentence hello ah sentence that contains vitamin vitamin so you have vitamin in there so it should trigger but if you have sentence that contains vitamins so it is vitamins with s but our keyword is only vitamin and we use match type so it will not trigger nope no trigger yeah so that's the difference between the match type and the white type right so what if the what is the strict type what if we use the strict type let me let me use strict and then click save So let's say vitamin, it will trigger. Vitamin, it will trigger. Okay, what if vitamins? Nope, it will not trigger on vitamins because it had to be exact. Vitamins, okay? So what if we use, we use it in a sentence? Use vitamin in a sentence. It will, still, it will not trigger on strict type. Because strict type is, it should be exact, okay? It should be exact. The keyword and the word that the user has typed should be exact. So since use vitamin in a sentence is not the same as vitamin, it will not trigger. So even, even the, the, the letter case, let's use capital V. Capital V, vitamin, it will not trigger. So even if it's still the same word, vitamin, but since... Uh, it is capitalized. The first letter is capitalized. It will not trigger. But if it is all small caps, vitamin, the very exact keyword, it will trigger. Yeah. So that's it. That's that's how easy it is uh, to differentiate the three types of keywords: the match type, the white type, and the strict type. Right. So I hope that's clear. Okay.
Any further questions about the keyword type? No more. I hope I, I explained it really well. Hello? Oh, you're good. It was perfect. Okay, good. So any further questions before we end? Yeah. So guys, thank you for attending our first session. Um, we have a lot to discuss and um, we will dive deeper. Uh, we will explore more hidden features or more uh, cool features um, MMIO has to offer on the chatbot on our next session and on the next session after that. So I really hope that I would also see you on the next um, uh, next series. So I hope you learned a lot and I hope I lit some light bulb on your brain, how you can, how you can change or create your flow, how you can better execute your flow. So I really hope that this session um, has been helpful. So good. Uh, here in the Philippines, um, good night, guys. And if it's morning to you, good morning. Um, to uh, um, if, if it's on your time zone, I really appreciate um, you attending um, on our first session, guys. So um, if you have further questions, please do email me. I will send to you uh, my email. Um, email me at colin at marketingmaster.io. Or you can create a support ticket if you have further questions. So this is a recorded video and I will release the recording um, maybe a week after all our series or, or, or the three day series is finished. So goodbye guys, see you tomorrow. See you on our next training series. Bye-bye. All right, thanks Colin, cheers. Cheers.